Hey, this is Walt with Raybuck Auto Body Parts, and today I'm coming to you from my house and my garage, and I wanted to share a little bit more with you about my 71 Camaro. I made a video probably about a month ago. I was out taking a ride and decided to make a quick video of the car. Uh, didn't come out exactly like I wanted, but um, I thought I could give a little more information on the car, show you some things we did with it, why we did those things, and uh, just get into a little more detail. So here's the car and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Okay, so this is my 71 Camaro. This car was originally a yellow with black vinyl top 307 car. Um, obviously the first thing you see when you look at a car is the paint. So let's get into that. The paint on the car obviously is white with black stripes. Um, a lot of people ask me why I went with white. Um, white is not probably people's first choice when they you know pick a color of a car but um, I've grown up my dad always liked white cars so I guess I kinda like white cars too and um, I went to a car show when I was uh, let me think probably around 15 and I saw one of these cars and it was a it was a stock Z28 car white with black stripes and from that point on, I had my mind made up that that's what I wanted. Uh, the one thing that I did want to do when I chose the color is I wanted the car to be white. I did not want it to look yellow or have like a bluish cast to it. So picking the paint was pretty important because I wanted it to be just a white, like pure white car. Uh, my uncle, who was working for PPG at the time, had made a suggestion on the color, and what we ended up going with was tint base. So instead of using uh, something that was necessarily a color, such as um, you know a white color or a black color, we went with pure tint base. And what that is is those are the colors that light colors and dark colors are made out of. It's the purest whites and the blackest blacks. So using those colors uh, gave me the look that I wanted. Uh, the car is pretty much you know, as white as you can get it and uh, the black's nice and deep. It doesn't have any... there's nothing weird about how they look. Um, we did most of the body work on the car uh, me, my dad, my uncle, a few other friends. Uh, Jeff at Taylor Auto Body painted the car in his booth, and we did the rest of the, the wet sanding and buffing. Um, not much modifications to the body. Um, it's pretty much an all steel car, full glass, um, everything. I mean, obviously the car has been had modified, been modified over the years, but. The only thing that's really like any type of lightweight or different is the hood. Um, I chose to use a Glass Tech 4 inch cow induction hood and mostly because it had to clear this thing. Uh, twin turbo small block in the car and just the, the actual height of the intake and everything was necessary to put a cow induction hood on it and I actually need the 4 inch to, to clear all that. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, on the outside of the car, uh, we run Billet Specialties wheels. <clears throat> Those are the street light wheels uh, with Mickey Thompson tires all the way around. In the fronts, same thing, the Billet Street Light wheels. Uh, Mickey Thompson Sportsman tires in the front. This is their, let's see. I believe this is a six or eight ply tire. Yeah, it's an eight ply tire. I don't know if you can see four and four. And these tires are designed for heavier cars. And with all the turbo equipment in the front of this um, and everything that goes with it, this car does have a lot of nose weight. So this heavier tire is good for this application. Um, the wheel is a 15 by I want to say three and a half or four inch wheel and that is a 26 by seven and a half by 15 Mickey Thompson Sportsman tire. Um, on the back 
originally had 15 by 10 inch wheels on it decided to it just the, the rear wheel looked like it was pulled in a little too far because of the way that the, the rear end was set up so I eventually went to a a 15 by 12 wheel and with a three and a half inch back spacing and the Mickey Thompson I think it's like a 29 and a half uh, by 15 wheel and tire or tire sorry yeah 29 by 15 by 15 so a little bit bigger but the wheel opening never had to be modified this is a stock wheel opening the wheel fits in it fine uh, the car we did mini tub the car and do a four link when the car was built um, I was going to keep it originally a stock suspension car but once we got under there and found a little more rust and well it was at the chassis shop they said it would actually be cheaper just to you know put some frame rails in it and a four link than to try and recreate all the factory welds and do all that type of stuff uh, moving around to the front can't get a real good shot of it here but uh, it does have the split bumpers on it you may have seen it in the other video this car originally had a full bumper on it but I do like the look of the kind of the RS split bumper look so that's what we decided to go with um, out back one interesting note on this car is it has a trailer hitch and there's a little bit of a story behind that um, the car originally did not have a trailer hitch um, we added that back in 2016 uh, decided to take the car on hot rod drag week uh, so me and Steve did hot rod drag week with the car and we had to pull a trailer uh, for those of you that don't know what hot rod drag week is it is a one week drive and race competition um, you have to take your car without any support vehicles drive it to four different tracks post a time hand in your time and whoever has the fastest time at the end of the week uh, will win their class so we were in uh, modified power adder which is a pretty fast class uh, we were able to finish sixth in that class with an average of uh, 863 at like 159 for the week and that was running at four different four, five days at four different tracks um, so in order to pull the trailer we had to put a trailer hitch on it uh, the trailer hitch functioned as both a trailer hitch and a parachute mount uh, made it so that the parachute fits into like the hitch receiver and then uh, behind the license plate here we have a little brace that holds the license plate down and that's where the uh, the cable would come through for the parachute and kill switch in the back so uh, safety keep, safety can get to that if they need to while we're on the track um, these are actually the slicks I ran these are again Mickey Thompson wheels Hoosier slicks that combination works real well um, but drag week was a lot of fun I'd love to do it again someday but I haven't raced the car for well probably about 2017 so um, don't know if we'll do it again or not uh, maybe someday I'll either do this car or something else and take it on drag week again actually as we speak they're doing Rocky Mountain Race Week out in like Denver Colorado area and that's a neat event because you're running at elevation uh, rather than closer to sea level here so it is a little a little bit more grueling as far as the drive and running the cars and you're in the mountains so puts a lot of extra load on the car um, but when we did drag week um, we had a like a six foot you know, like a little utility trailer that we had with a box on the back of it and um, the car did real well um, I think that's the thing that I'm most proud of is you know we ran really good times our goal was to finish the week 
and we did that and without any mechanical failures so that was that was a big deal um, you know the car can run that fast and be dependable so um, but for drag week like I said we had a we had to get that trailer done um, we put changed the rear gear in the car just a little bit uh, went down to a 320 gear to help with some of the uh, road driving and had the converter tightened up a little bit um, so that pulling the trailer wouldn't put so much heat into the transmission. Um, it hurt the car a little bit as far as how it wanted to launch. Um, it did took a little bit longer for it to come up on the torque converter and on the RPM limiter. Um, but during drag week, you're not necessarily racing against the person next to you. It's just time. So that didn't, didn't really hurt us too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, the car was super reliable. Um, you know, the motor was built by Andy Jensen in uh, Jensen Engine Technologies. Uh, he builds a great motor. Without uh, Andy and some other people, uh, this car wouldn't have made the trip. Uh, Carl Rossler, Rossler Transmissions, uh, got a bulletproof 400 in the car, and that worked flawlessly throughout the run. Um, PTC converters helped me out and uh, got that converter tightened up for me. So speaking of drag week, imagine doing a thousand miles in this. Um, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it did get a little warm. We were running, driving when it was 70, 80 degrees, so it did get a little bit warm in the car. The seats in the car, uh, the driver's seat is aluminum seat. This is an Ultra Shield aluminum racing seat. The other seat over there is one of the plastic jazz racing seats. Um, neither of which are terribly uncomfortable, but after hours in the car, it tends to wear on you a little bit. The one thing that I, I really liked about the aluminum seat, I, when I originally built the car, the plastic seat was in the car, and you can still move around a little bit. You can't, it doesn't like hold you in tight. When you're in this aluminum seat, you can buy the seats in different widths. So this area between, like between here, and you get it just so your hips fit in there. And once you're in that seat and strapped in, you pretty much, you're going nowhere you know in the event of accident or something like that and that that really gives you a good feeling when you're in the car racing it um, to not have to worry about like moving around in the seat at all of course for racing we have our five point harnesses um, i've always really liked the stroud cam lock harnesses oh where is it here you've seen some of them some of the the harnesses that have like the kind of flip over latch this one has the little notches that they clip into and then it just rotates to release the latches um, I've always found it pretty simple and works really well a um, little bit about the interior I may have gone over this before but um, we used all autometer phantom gauges uh, kind of kept with the white black theme on the car using the white gauges We have volt mile per hour fuel boost vacuum gauge tack fuel pressure oil water oil temperature and Transmission temperature got to have cup holders especially if you're going to be driving this is the cheetah shifter. I like this shifter because it's a gated shifter. So when the car is in drive, you don't have to pull any levers or anything. You just simply goes back, pops over, goes down again, and that's it. It's virtually impossible to miss a shift or for the shifter to bind up. Um, and um, it's worked really, really well for me. Uh, trans brake. Um, that just holds the car in place while we're at the starting line 
and it's also programmed into the boost controller so we can set a certain amount of boost pressure while the car is sitting at the line on the trans brake and then once the trans brake is released it goes into a timing mode that controls the boost as the car goes down the track. Uh, the bottle you see here, a lot of people ask me if I'm running nitrous. Uh, that is not a nitrous bottle, that is a CO2 bottle and basically what that is for is to run uh, boost pressure, or not boost pressure, but uh, CO2 pressure to the electronic boost controller which I have mounted here. And how that works is you have wastegates for the turbochargers. So the wastegates have a spring pressure in them. The spring is on this half of the wastegate. On the other side of the wastegate is a diaphragm. And you can see the lines that come in and out of there. But what you can't see is um, there's a line. This line kind of runs up from that set of solenoids on the firewall there. So the CO2 runs into there, comes out of that line, runs up to the wastegates. And what that allows us to do is right now we have a five pound spring in here. So this will make five pounds of boost pressure. When we open up the CO2 bottle, that provides extra pressure to the solenoids on the, on the firewall there. And depending on what we program into the boost controller, it will add CO2 pressure to the top side of the wastegate and push down on the diaphragm that's in this wastegate. And that helps keep the wastegate closed and makes more boost going to the turbo. A little bit more about the, the motor and drivetrain in the car. Uh, so what we have, this motor uh, originally was a 372 cubic inch motor. Um, over the years, I've changed things up a little bit on it. Uh, I took it, when I took, first took the motor to Andy Jensen, um, he recommended putting a little more cubic inch in the motor. And that will help with, you know, spooling up the converter a little bit quicker. And uh, so that's what we did. And ever since then, this thing has been really, really dependable. Uh, it's, and that's when it started really running some fast times. A little bit about the pieces on the motor. Um, we run twin precision 67, 66 billet wheel turbos. T4 housing, it's a .96 AR on the housing, which is uh, like the inner size of the housing. Um, dual tile wastegates. These are their 44 millimeter wastegates. Um, same thing with the blow-off valve, tile blow-off valve, uh, AccuFab 90 millimeter throttle body, uh, auto meter regulator, that's their pro regulator, um, actually the whole fuel system, aeromotive system, um, we run two fuel pumps in the back with three fuel filters, um, those are all aeromotive. The injectors, I used to have a set of 160 pound Ford, Ford type injectors in it. Um, had some problems with them leaking after about 10 years. So we switched over to a set of Holly 160 pound per hour injectors. Which are a touch on the big side for driving around. Uh, but they work really well at the track. So just tuning it is a, is a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Um, we run an air to air intercooler. This is a four inch uh, Garrett core with, uh, let's see, we run two and a half inch pipes out of the turbos into the intercooler and then a four inch pipe. You can see that runs down underneath and back up into the manifold there. The uh, intercooler was done by Ron Shear at Shear Fabrication and he does some really nice work. Uh, good guy to work with. The ignition system on the car 
is a little bit different. Uh, I run an Electromotive Tech 3R engine management system. This is a waste fire type ignition system. So instead of running eight coils like an LS motor, this runs foil, four coils and there's a waste fire with each uh, each firing of the coil. So a live cylinder will get you know the ignition and there's a cylinder that's down will get the the waste fire. Um, it's a it's an older system but it works really well. You'll see like this this ignition system has a 60 tooth trigger wheel uh, which provides a lot of accuracy for ignition timing versus so there's some like an MSD system might have a you know like a four magnet wheel um, so you'll see on the new Hollies they have pretty much the same uh, 60 tooth trigger wheel uh, with the new like Holly HPs and Dominator systems so even though this is an older system it works really well it doesn't have all the functions that the newer systems have but as far as fuel and ignition control you know it does just as good as anything else uh, we run a be cool radiator in the car it's worked very well um, have a little bit of a leaking problem out here right now but this uh, this radiator works real well in fact um, we had two spall fans on that I think they're 13 inch spall fans with this radiator and can pretty much drive the car in any temperature um, as I said we took this car on drag week and um, you know some 80 degree days pulling a trailer you know driving the car 250 miles a day and it never got over 200 degrees so radiator works very well um, we do run a mechanical water pump uh, a lot of people go to the electric pumps um, I again went for reliability with this car and um, stuck with the mechanical pump that is a Stewart uh, stage 2 pump which uh, works real well um, the headers um, the headers on the car were originally made by Nelson Racing Engines. Uh, that's who I originally purchased the motor from uh, way back in like 2005. Um, as I said though, since then we've, we've made some changes with the motor and it's gone uh, over to Andy Jensen to have work done. And actually been built a couple times by Andy. Um, but right now, the exhaust on the car is all stainless. Uh, it's all 304 stainless steel from turbo all the way out the back of the car. Um, it is three and a half inch all the way. Um, under the car, it turns from round to oval tubing. Let's see if you can see that. And it goes into a set of bullet mufflers. Uh, these are Spintech oval, or oval bullet mufflers. They don't do a whole lot for sound, um, but I needed them to kind of fit into some classes to have a muffler on the car. Um, up in the back, I don't know if you can see it or not, once it converts back to a round, um, there is a much larger Dynamax muffler that I put on there. Um, just to help with the sound while driving the car. <clears throat> when we were looking at the wheels, I forgot to mention the brakes on the car. Uh, we run Willwood Dynalite four piston calipers all the way around and Willwood Master Cylinder as well. These are manual brakes. Um, no room in there for any type of power brakes. And for drag racing, I really don't like the power brakes. A um, little too touchy when you're going, you know, 160 mile an hour through the traps. You want to be able to get into the brakes and not have them, you know, be too touchy or lock up the brakes because that could really cause some problems on the big end. So under the car, you can see the car has a full frame rail now. Obviously, there's a roll cage in the car. Uh, full 12-point cage. And four link under there. Um, can't really see the transmission too well, but that is, the, like I said, the Turbo 400. Um, 
nine inch forward out back. That's a fully braced nine inch forward rear end. We run coilovers all the way around. I run AFCO double adjustable coilovers on the front. And in the back, we have some Kony single adjustable coilovers. Um, stay tuned for the upcoming transmission swap. Um, even though the 400 was a really good transmission, now that I don't really race the car anymore and we'll start driving it a lot more, I want something that's a little more fun on the, you know, driving on the street and a little more friendly on the highway. So we're going to be going to a six speed, which means all this stuff in the middle here is going to be going away. Uh, we're going to make a new console, take out some of the gauges, uh, obviously transmission temperature, uh, the CO2 will come out. Um, since we'll just be driving the car, I'm going to have to pick a spring package for the wastegates. Probably target somewhere around 12 pounds of boost, and that'll be just constantly what the car runs out on the street. Um, may do something with the seats. I haven't decided yet. Uh, carpet over the years has got a little bit beat up, so we'll probably put some new carpet in it. Um, we use ACC carpets for everything we sell at Raybucks and in all of our personal vehicles, so probably be giving them a call for some new carpets. Haven't decided what kind of seats I want to put in it yet. Uh, I may just use the racing seats again since uh, being that the roll cage is in the car, it's a little bit hard to tell, but your head does get kind of close. So if you get like a regular bucket seat that sits you kind of up, it's a little thicker, uh, put your head a little close to the roll cage. So may stick with a racing seat and uh, I don't know, just do some type of upholstery on it or something a little bit different than the cover that comes on it. Maybe a fuller type upholstery, a little bit more padding maybe. Uh, I don't know, we'll see what comes up, but um, yeah, so we're going to be doing the six speed swap. And this is the transmission that will be going in the car. Um, this is the Tremec Magnum F. Uh, Tremec makes three different transmissions in the Magnum series. Uh, there is the standard Magnum, the Magnum F, and then the Magnum F XL. Um, they're pretty much the same transmission, it's just shifter locations are a little bit different. So this one has kind of what I would call the middle mount. Um, this mount position is a little bit farther back than your standard muscle car type transmission would be. And because of the fact that I have the racing seats in the car, I sit down and a little bit further back than you normally would. So I wanted the shifter to kind of come back a little bit farther. Uh, I'd really like it to be like right there, like a real short shifter. But um, we'll get into that and some of the pieces that go with that and the conversion in upcoming videos. So that's about all for the car. If you have any questions, please let us know. You can follow us on our YouTube channel and make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get upcoming video notifications. As I said, we will be doing a six speed swap in this car and have hopefully some good video for you of the modifications that we have to do to make that work in this car. Check out our website, raybuck.com, and thanks for watching.